Last Sunday, I kind of left you with a challenge. Um, to, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge that sometimes makes the following Sunday less, less uh, inhabited, but today I'm blessed I'm more inhabited. I asked us to look deep within ourselves and find out if there was forgiveness that we need to offer or forgiveness we needed to receive. And I challenged us to make that as a step forward and extending ourselves as disciples of Christ because people need the Lord. People need to see. I, I could, could not get through that song because he lives because it made me think back on the year gone by and the challenges that we had faced and the pain and suffering, yet the sun has risen and a new day comes and we're here together to heal one another and to love one another. So I challenged ourselves to take that step forward and and to relieve ourselves of the roadblock that separates us from Jesus. And and it can truly be a roadblock. I believe that. I know that. I've not only felt that, but um, I've seen people freed from that when it finally happens. And so... As I thought back this week, um, I did a lot of working remotely from home. My hours this week were all over the place. Like I was here at 7 in the morning one day, and I was here at 8 o'clock yesterday morning, and then I was here at 7 o'clock at night. And it was just, there was no schedule to my life, so I was discombobulated. And I, I was so blessed when I came in yesterday in the morning to sit down that it was peaceful and quiet. And it was sunny, but man, that wind was cutting. Woo! I was glad I was in the warm building, amen? But this, this journey of, of self-evaluation, this journey of self-improvement, this, this journey of truth is so that we realize that because of Jesus, I'm forgiven, and because of Jesus, I must forgive. I mean, Scripture tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. So whomever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And the next verse says, He sent his son not to judge this world, but to save it through him. That means judging is not a part of our forte either. We're just to be the messengers and the living examples of God's love. Now, it's really easy to get caught up in judging. Amen? I mean... (laughs) What would the TV shows have to t- do if it wasn't about judging one another and hurting one another? But as we approach Lent, Lent it begins in less than two weeks. What a blessing it would be in our walk of faith if we were free to experience everything that God is offering in the life, death, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If that roadblock, if those... Um, handcuffs if those chains were gone and so we've been pushing um, since Christmas to to evaluate even though Lent is a season of evaluation uh, enough so that we're freer and might find even more jewels and precious gifts so this morning um, um, the the scriptures called the other cheek uh, turn the other cheek but I also call it the do's and don'ts of loving one another, um, because God's very specific in that. Now, I want to begin in the book of Genesis. Uh, we're starting at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. That's about all I remember that song. Something with do, re, mi, but let's move on. Genesis 45. Jo- this is a story of Joseph, and if you remember Joseph... He was the smart kid. He was the one that was gifted with knowledge and, and, and well-spoken and a little more handsome than his brothers, and, and uh, they didn't like that. So they sold him off into slavery, figuring they'd never see him again, and they would be the stars of the family, and Daddy would be more proud of them. Well, didn't work that way, but we're going to find out why. So Joseph is gathered in Egypt with his brothers. They don't know who he is yet. And he says to them, Well, I am Joseph. And he asked them, Is my father alive? 
But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he asked. So they came closer, and he said to them, Now, this is a man sold into slavery, pretty much given away to die so that he wouldn't bother my life anymore. And he says, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset, and don't be angry with yourselves. Man, is that like castor oil. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Don't be upset with yourselves for selling me to this place. Here it is. For it was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Remember the, the analogy of turning lemons into lemonade? Wow. Joseph's not there to berate them. Joseph's not there to say, Look what you have done. Joseph turns to God and said, For it was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last for five more years, he said. And there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. For God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he, is the, he alone is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all of Egypt. More lemonade. Not, now hurry back to my father and tell him, this is what your son Joseph says. <laughs> Imagine having to go home and tell daddy, well, you know, Joe... He really didn't disappear and die. Uh, we kind of put him in jail in Egypt. And uh, now he's the Pharaoh's right-hand man, and he wants us to move. <laughs> I knew how my dad might have taken that. Um, yeah, that would have been as hard as anything. As mom always say, just wait till your dad gets home. God has made Joseph master over all the land of Egypt, so come to him, come to me immediately, he said, for you can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me and all your children and grandchildren and your flocks and herds and everything that you own, and I will take care of you here, for there are still five years of famine ahead of us, otherwise you, your household, and all your animals will starve. <laughs> Then Joseph kissed each of his brothers and wept for them. And after that, they began to talk freely with him. Wow. Forgiveness is healing. Forgiveness is love. <laughs> when he kissed them, he freed them from the lies and the guilt. I, I was reading somewhere... It's so much harder to live a life through your history than to live the truth. Because a lie never, it constantly evolves where the truth sets you free. Joseph was emulating God's unconditional love. God's grace and God's forgiveness. In fact, he was giving God the praise and glory for him being imprisoned and sold into slavery so that God could bless his family. <laughs> Lessons of God's Spirit living within ourselves. Amen? <laughs> now, that's just one biblical <laughs> example of how we as followers of Christ shall live. Luke puts it this way in Luke 6, 27. But to you who are willing to listen, I say love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. These are do's. Uh, my do's and don'ts of loving one another. If someone slaps you on the cheek, Offer the other cheek. Well, that's just not the way the world works, is it? Anybody been 
slapped on the cheeks and said, thank you, sir, may I have another? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone demands your coat, give them to them and offer them your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do unto you. For if you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit for that? For even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those you know will repay you, why should you get credit? For even sinners will lend, their mo lend other sinners if they know they'll get a full return. No, love your enemies and do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Woo, boy, that's a, that one cuts deep, amen? That's my money. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will be truly acting as a child of the Most High, for he is, the, he is kind to those who are unthankful. He is, for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. You must be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. And I wrote in here as I was reading this this morning, imitation is the finest form of flattery. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, as Christ did for us. Now, Luke goes on to give us a list of don'ts. <laughs> do not judge others, then you won't be judged. Do not condemn others or it will come back against you. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive for your gift will return to you in full Press down, shaken together, and make to make room for more and more, running over and pouring onto your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. Sometimes when I read this, we're challenged to ask the question of why is this so important? Why is God so demanding of our obedience? There's just too many rules for me to follow. I'm destined to fail. This is like Jesus is making things impossible for me to succeed. Well, when those questions arise, I know the devil speaks. Amen? Nothing is impossible. God's word said in Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. That means what you hear in your ear from Satan is a lie. There is no truth in it. Throw it out in the trash. Seek his will and all you will do and he will show you the path to take. Remember the flashlight example yesterday? <laughs> the light amongst the storm. The light that cannot be extinguished. Philippians 4 through 3, for I can do all things through Christ my Lord who strengthens me. Failure is impossible if Jesus is my Savior and my Lord, and I've given all of me to him for the glory of his kingdom, not for my glory, for his glory, for his will to be done. Amen? Not mine. I don't want to be known as Pastor John the Great Preacher. I want to be known as a man who simply loved the Lord and shared Him in a most unusual way. Amen? Amen. I don't want a parade. I want paradise. I want to see that face, the face. That one. And, he, and I want Him to know my name. Can you imagine when you get to heaven, whatever his face looks like, but for me it's this one today, and he says, John, put your name in this picture, Terry, I've been waiting for you. Come and rest from your labor, for you are with me in that place that I have prepared for you. 
And we are together forever. Amen? Man, that's all I want in life. I don't want to be rich. I mean, being rich would be nice, but it just means according to God's will, I've got to give a lot of it away. Amen? Ooh, do you want that burden? <sighs> Boy, is that a whole nother <laughs> crock of beans. I got so much money, I've got to give it all away. Well, what a, what, a, what a wrestling event that would be. Yes. Remember, remember this. Always come back to the truth. Jesus came to reconcile us from the fall, from original sin, and the only way that happens is if we believe in him and offer our hearts to him, all of our hearts to them. Believe in me. He came not to judge, but to save us. And in John 17, Jesus prays for us. Hear this encouragement. Jesus is talking to his Father. He says, Dad, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that we will all be one, just as you and I are one. For as you are in me, Father, I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they, ex may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you loved me. Wow. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Oh, righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. For I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for we, me will be in them, and I will be in them. People need the Lord. Amen? And if we don't make ourselves instruments of his love and grace with all, all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then how can they see him? Because they can only see him as flawed humans. Think about that. Think about going home today and opening up your checkbook and God says, give it all away. Trust in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and I will make your path known. Give it all away. Isn't that what he said to the disciples? Drop your nets. Put away the coins and follow me. Silence. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a lot to think about, amen? But if we can trust him, he's going to reward us for that trust because the Bible itself says for that. This love is, but Christ's love, that picture right there, Christ is the difference maker. We, if we trust him with all of our heart, Jesus that is, then we can abandon and tune out the noise of the evil one because the evil one is the right one, not one, the one right now saying, Pastor John has lost his noggin. He wants me to give my money away. I don't want you to do anything but follow him. With all your heart. So, mind you. I'm having enough tough trouble doing that myself. But I want you to go with me. I want you to experience paradise. I want you, we said goodbye to Allie yesterday. And I looked out on those children and those grandchildren and a great grandchild. Is that how terrible it is to be without grandma? So close to when you lost grandpa. People need the Lord. We are the instrument to bring them into the truth, to share Christ's love and grace, and to help them through the storm so that they can see the light. Amen? This is only possible if Christ is in us and we are in him. We have to embrace the change that makes us different from the world. Has anybody noticed what COVID has freed? 
drive through lines aren't for fast service anymore. They're just another way to get your food. And it's like a roll of the dice if you're really going to get what you ordered because I'm out of this and I'm out of that and I don't. You know what might, God forgive me, Arby's, but find someone to get you a good milkshake machine. Because every time I go, it's broken. I'm supposed to love my Jamocha shake, but I can never get it because the machine's down. Well, buy a new machine. Oh. See how easy the noise can get us off track? See how easy the... I mean, I'm worried about a milkshake, for God's sake, and nothing else. Take your eyes off the prize, and you get lost in the dark. Amen? Amen. <laughs> there's going to be a... Whenever Megan sells her house, there's going to be a plumber who hates my guts. Number one, I am six foot one and 300 plus pounds, and I was not made to crawl in a vanity. Amen? Yes. Don't even envision that. But they bought this beautiful vanity, got a great deal on it. One piece, seamless, gorgeous on the top. But when you flip it over to put the drain in it, it was like, so, how are you supposed to get the seal to seal on a basis like this? So, trust in the Lord with all my heart. I put it together, turn on the water, it leaks. Take it apart, put it together, turn on the water, it leaks. Take it apart. God invented Loctite marine grade caulk and seal it. Squeeze a little that in there put it together, it don't leak anymore. It may never come apart again, but I'm going to be long gone and in paradise for somebody has got to change that trap, amen? Yes, yes, free at last, free at last. The stinky drain no longer drips, free at last. <laughs> but what I want us to remember, gosh, I went down the rabbit hole on that one, <laughs> is that face. Uh, Larry's probably the only one who, who realizes this, but I come here about 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, and I turn on the lights, and I make our coffee, and I make sure the teapot's turned on. Then I put that picture on the screen, and I sat right in your seat, Nancy. I sat in your seat. I did, and we talk. We talk about, oh, Lord, what do you want me to tell them today? You know how, Lord, I go down the rabbit hole and I get lost. And he says, that's why I picked you, John. You can tell a story. And eventually, you get there. <laughs> so, our victory then only comes in who? Yes. Play the video, please. Imagine that. I saved the video almost to the end of the service.
victory in Jesus. Now, God knows everything. And he knows that was a lot to ask us. So Paul wrote this letter to the church in Corinth and in chapter 15, he wrote the chapter on the resurrection of the body. Some people may ask, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. When you put a seed into the ground, it doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. And what if you put in the ground is not a plant that will grow, but only bear seeds of wheat or whatever you're planting? Then God gives it a new body that He wants it to have, and a different plant grows from each kind of seed. It's the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted into the ground when they die, but they will be raised to life forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are spiritual bodies. The scripture tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, is the life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven, from God. Earthly people are like earthly men, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man, Jesus Christ. Just as we are now like earthly men and women, we will someday be like the heavenly men and women, in Christ. What I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These are the dying bodies that cannot inherit what will last forever. <laughs> That's good news. This old body that I've been dragging around trying to fit in vanities with screws and plates and stitches and scars and arthritis everywhere is gone. When Jesus calls me home, I'm spiritually alive in Him. Remember the heart we talked about last week? Have you looked at it? Have you found the angel wings in there? That's what tomorrow is promised in Jesus. Because we become new persons in Christ, new men and women in Christ. A transformation happens that changes us from this world to His world. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature, for the old has passed away, and behold, all things become new. That's 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. <laughs> they didn't get it in the first letter, so we wrote them a second one. Amen? That's just like being a witness for Christ. Tell them over and over again how Jesus saved you, and live your life out loud in that saved and transformed body, and no one can resist God's glory and God's presence in you, in you. Klaus, last week, or no, last month, he's got, you got almost a month, right? He'd send me pictures of him sitting on the beach, having a glass of wine, saying, this is my kind of communion. Well, that's just not nice. That was when we were three feet deep in the blizzard. And the lights went out on you. <laughs> it just got dark back there. Oh, yep, see. But because of Jesus, Klaus, we're alive, amen? The light came back, yes. And that's the joy, the excitement that we have to take forward. We're having a pancake dinner in 10 days. Come and rejoice. Come and be happy. Come and show the world that Otterbein didn't die with COVID. No, it's alive and well because Jesus Christ is here in all of us. Amen? Amen. And he's, he's waiting to get out. I, I was looking at the calendar this morning. I was having moments. I was thinking, 
when, when do I pick our first outside worship? You know, if, if it's Shrove Tuesday, then it's Ash Wednesday, and then comes Resurrection Sunday, then comes Mother's Day, we got to get outside. We got to get happy and make noise. We got to beep our horns for the neighbors to know that Jesus is alive. Was that you, Sal, Susie? I knew that was you. Praise the Lord. We are a new man, woman, and child because of the blood of Jesus. The old is gone and we are made new and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn.